I am not 100% sure that you guys are going to be able to see everything that I'm going to put onto this board. Hopefully, I won't have to put a ton of information on here to get my point across, but I want to start this video a little differently than I start most of my videos, guys. I want to talk a little bit real quick about the homeowner that actually owns the home of this project that you're all about to see. This homeowner happens to be a single mom, guys. How many of you watching right now are a single mom or was possibly raised by a single mom? Uh, if you're in those shoes, then you already know or maybe, uh, maybe you've experienced it yourself how hard those shoes are to wear for someone. This person that owns this home is also a United States military veteran. She actually just recently retired from the services and she is a new home owner. So what we're dealing with here guys is someone that has worked hard, someone who has sacrificed not only for herself and her family but for our family as well. She's a United States veteran and she is a single mother which I've already stated. So what happens when a single mom has worked their entire life away to provide for their family that they've built and they finally have bought the home of their dreams. They've got their dream home now. Well, this customer did exactly that. And she found out that her dream home was experiencing some moisture problems underneath the home inside the crawl space. She actually sent me some pictures, guys, of last summer after a hurricane. I'm gonna insert those photos right now and show you how much water my friend was dealing with before she ever dialed my phone number. Check it out. And due to the fact that there was that much water inside that crawl space, I chose to go ahead and tackle this project into two phases. Phase one was just going to be getting rid of the standing water. And as you already know, or maybe you don't know, but in order to get rid of a standing water problem, you have to have a series of French drain lines going around the inside perimeter of the foundation, all leading to a sump pump basin, which collects the water that is channeled to the sump pump basin, and then is discharged via a sump pump. And I will go ahead and insert a couple photos of what our drain line looked like a little over two months ago, whenever the entire Crawl Space Artist crew visited my friend and took care of her standing water issues. What I would like to do now, guys, is go ahead and insert a link to the actual video of all that before work that we did. So if you would, just click this link right here in the corner of the screen and go ahead and see for yourself exactly everything that we had to do to this project that you're getting ready to see the completed version of, but look at everything that we had to address, check out all the before footage, and I also want you to take note really quick that most importantly of all, before we arrived, the homeowner, remember, the single mom, remember the United States veteran that just retired? She had actually paid a company over, yes, I said over, O-V-E-R, six, thousand dollars okay so she'd already paid someone over six thousand dollars to come in there and take care of that project which i hate to say that i was right but i told her months ago on the phone listen if you think and for that fact if any of you watching right now thinks that you can get anyone to come inside your crawl space and do for what you see us doing over and over and over again and what you've been seeing us doing now for more years than i can even count you're mistaken and if you'd like to voluntarily raise your hand and find out that you're mistaken be my guest stroke that check and i'll look forward to your phone call here in six months to a year so it's whatever you want to do because she spent over six grand 
And luckily for her, she'd already been researching via watching all of our videos located at crawlspaceartist.com. Actually has the world's largest crawlspace encapsulation video library. Don't you think for one second, guys, it might be kind of smart if you're a homeowner and you're thinking about getting a crawlspace encapsulation done that you sit there and visit the world's largest crawlspace encapsulation video library? I think that might be a wise move on your behalf. She had been doing just that. And what she realized a couple days into the project is that the people that she had hired, they weren't doing what you see Tanner and the crawl space artists doing. They weren't doing anything close. So she said, time out, cut it. She called a halt to the project. They gathered everything and they left. And they said, we'll give you a portion of your money back. That was months and months and months ago, guys. She has yet to receive one cent of this six thousand something dollars that she spent. I don't even know the amount. I don't know the company. I'm just letting everyone watching you know this homeowner had spent over six grand to take care of these problems and they were taken care of. She fired the company and they've never given her any of her money back and they took all the materials with her. So correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're a homeowner and you pay a company over six thousand dollars and they've already installed some product, whatever it may have been, and they take all that product with them and leave, Sounds to me like that's stealing. So if you're watching right now and you're the company that took the money from her, <laughs> I think really hard about what you did. So guys, I just wanted to bring everyone up to date and get all of us on the same page about what was going on here before I began the actual video. So sit tight and we're about to do just that. Okay guys, check it out. Stay with me, follow along real close. Whenever you're dealing with the foundation of a home, if this right here, that we're, this right here, if this is the grass outside your home, we're going to call this grass level one, okay? The grass outside your home, in this example, is level one. When they come and they dig down and they dig a footer inside that ground to build your home on top of, remember, this is level one right here. So, whenever they dig this footer in the ground, guys, they have then created level two. And then in most circumstances, around the entire inside perimeter of the foundation, guys, there is a trench all around this level here, and that would be considered level three, which would be, in most people's circumstances, the exact situation that you're dealing with or anyone else for that matter. And what happens is water that's coming down from the sky, whatever, this water is going to come down. It's going to fall down to level two and become a problem here, or it goes on down into level three, which is these trenches, and then fills up and then gets a top of level two. Okay. So whenever we have to go inside of a crawl space and address the standing water issues present, we have to go in here and replicate the level one, level two, and level three series that I've already mentioned that is taking place naturally, that we've already created really ourselves, so really it's kind of not naturally. But if we can replicate that system, which we can, it will take care of all the water issues. So what you have to do then is pretend that the ground level within the crawl space is level one. And then whenever you go around the inside perimeter edges, and then you start digging those trenches around this area, you are then creating level two. Remember, level one, level two, level three. So what's level three going to be? That's going to be our deepest point here where we dig and bury our sump pump basin which will house our sump pump, which will then discharge the water outside the home. So way down here, you've got level three. So now, instead of water being up here on level one, then coming down here and being a problem for homeowners at level two or three, we've really kind of created levels four and five, actually. It can come off the ground level of the crawl space then and immediately fall inside the depth level of the drain lines itself, which will then channel the water over here to our basin area, which is what, guys? That is our deepest point. So the only way this system can fail ever for me, for you, for anyone watching, is if you've got enough rainfall coming down outside 
and your power gets cut off long enough for that rainfall to accumulate enough to fill up this entire basin area, this entire French drain line area, and then come atop this ground level of the crawl space, which is what we do not want happening. That is why, a little over two months ago, we had to go inside this particular project and do exactly what I just mentioned. We did a full inside perimeter French drain system leading all that water to the deepest level, level three here, our sump pump basin, which you're going to see in the video multiple times, where that water is then collected until it rises up to a point where it trips a float switch, and then that water comes up and outside the home, where that water is no longer a problem then inside the crawl space of the home. We wanted to go ahead and test this system though inside this project. You guys seen those photos from last year when she had that hurricane. We're talking water that deep. We wanted to test our system and make sure that it was able to withstand the amount of rainfall that happens at her home because the last thing we wanted to do was take her money, perform our encapsulation, and then have all that water get right back on top of it. I don't want that happening, guys. She didn't want that happening, and we've been testing this system now for nearly three months straight. She has had some tremendous storms out there at her home, she's told me, and she has never once seen a drop of water rise up and get inside that crawl space. So we knew we were then ready to go back and take care of our signature famous 20 mil crawl space encapsulation work. And guys, I'm getting ready to turn the video over to Drew Burt, and he's gonna take you throughout the beginning of the project. We were having some audio difficulties with the GoPro. So actually, once he goes inside to show you all the main finished project, I'm gonna to have to do a voiceover. I'm gonna do my best to talk you guys throughout the project. And Drew, thanks a lot because I've already seen the clips. He's got the shakiest finished video I've ever seen. I'm gonna get you, Drew Burt. You need to progress on that video skills, boy. Check it out, guys. Here we go. All right, guys, here we are. Fayetteville, North Carolina. Once again, finished this job we started a couple months ago. Just check it out, everything looks the same. We're really not sure if this uh, GoPro is working right. Last time I had issues with it, probably as a user. Check it out, see what we got going on. These two, right? Yeah. What are y'all doing? You hurt me like a dog. Pulling all this poly off. Why are we having to pull this poly off? So pretty much they didn't know what they were doing. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much, hunting yeah. backwards. Well, it happens when you hire the wrong people. That's why they hire us. That's it. What would Tanner say? You're just throwing your money away. I've been trying to tell them for years, Nick. Some listen, some don't. Some save money, some blow it. Oh, well, I do what I can. Anywhere that we work, these homeowners are super nice. Let's go over here and look and see what she's done for us today. Special lunch. Right here. It's gone. But I promise it was good. Now let's go over here and see what these guys are doing. Brian, what do you got going on in there? Chipping hammer. Chipping hammer. This guy. What do you got going on in there? What's up, guys? Tell them what we got going on, Nick. Oh, we're here in North Carolina finishing up a job for a customer that had some other people come in and do the wrong thing so we're here to do the right one we got our uh, six mil poly already laid got our 20 mil poly starting to wrap the pillars tell them about what that is over there and how good that was oh man that table right there oh why don't you tell them drew you had about four or five of them i've been told them that. <laughs> heck of a job on that crawl space door there drew man that thing looks slick love how neat you did all the edge work i see how you caulked around all that brick and made sure you didn't leave any gaps great job See our lights, guys, but I want everyone watching this video right now to make special note. My father-in-law, William Austin, did not, I repeat, my father-in-law did not do any of the electrical work inside this crawl space, and that is why it is not lit up nearly as well as any of our normal projects. This electrical work was conducted by some electrician there in the town where my friend lives. There we just passed the sump pump basin area 
And to the left, you will have noticed our first humidistat fan on this project. There are three humidistat fans on this project, and any of you that have been following along for any time at all now, you already know those humidistat fans that you'll see, those are the exhaust of the project, and they take air from within the crawl space and send it outside the home so that no stagnant odors are built up inside the crawl space itself and make their way up inside the actual living quarters of the home. Now, take a look at all the tops of the walls, all the piers. Look how nice and flat and level all the ground is. Guys, terrific job. As usual, I did not expect anything less. I never do. Look at the edge work around that humidistat fan right there. And Drew is showing you all that that fan is set to 40%, and that is where we like to set all of our humidistat fans. Making our way now back to the front side of the home, look around those foundation walls there. Nothing is out of place. It looks like everything was edged off with a razor blade, which I go ahead and guarantee you, it actually was. And if you're wondering what you're looking at exactly, all of that white stuff you see, that is our 20 mil fiberglass reinforced poly. And that is gone right over the top of our six mil ground barrier, which we installed a few months ago whenever we did the inside perimeter French drain and sump pump job that I already mentioned earlier inside the video. Never under normal circumstances would we have split this project into two separate phases, but like I already mentioned, I did not even want to risk the chance of having that water raise up above ground level and make its way on top of our finished poly. And that's why I did not want to do any of the encapsulation work until we had tested this system and seen that it could handle the storms that they have out there at her home. We already knew we would be coming back to this project, so we didn't just stop at the inside perimeter French drain lines and our sump pump install. We went ahead and like I already mentioned, did a new six mil ground barrier and went ahead and installed all three of our humidistat fans before leaving. And then that way, whenever we returned last week to begin phase two of the project, all we had left to do was all of the 20 mil encapsulation work and the installation and plumbing of our big Santa Fe Advanced dehumidifier system, which you will all see here shortly. And take note because every time you see a dimly lit area within this crawl space, it just drives me up the wall. And had this not been a travel project, there is no way that we would have let another electrician handle one of our projects. So any of you local watching this video, anywhere remotely close to the Cleveland, Tennessee and Chattanooga, Tennessee areas, don't even ask because there's only one electrician putting his name on any projects from Tennessee technicians here locally. And that's my father-in-law, William Austin. And taking a look at this project right now makes me respect and appreciate him on a whole nother level, if that's even possible. Now guys, I really want you to pay close attention here because the powerhouse is just up here in front of us now. Just on the other side of this big drainage line, you're going to see it right there it is, our Santa Fe Advanced Dehumidifier System. Guys, that thing is pulling air within the front of it there, and it's sending it out the sides of the system. That's where it shoots out all the dehumidified air, and that is one of the main reasons for our humidistat fans. That dehumidifier will pressurize that entire crawl space, especially whenever it's sealed to the extent as what you're seeing all of our projects sealed to. And if you do not have a way for that pressurized air to escape the crawl space, those stagnant odors will become present inside the living quarters of the home, as I mentioned inside every video. Look at Drew cranking that dehumidifier on up. Crank it on up there, brother, all the way up 
to 7 o'clock where we always like to set them. And you'll see that switch right there to the left, guys. You always want to make sure that switch is set to auto. And there's that hanging kit that I just mentioned to you earlier. And once you get that unit hung, you always want to set your level on top of it and make sure that you've got that thing completely level so that the water can drain from outside the unit and into the condensate pump properly as it should so that it can then exit the crawl space. <laughs> and there you have it guys, another brand new crawl space encapsulation project taken care of by the world's best, the crawl space artist. Visit us online here guys, I'll spell it out for you. CrawlspaceArtist.com. Artist is plural. Once again, that is CrawlspaceArtist.com. Be sure that you make sure that that Crawlspace Artist is plural. Guys, if you haven't done so already and you found value inside this video, do me a big favor, why don't you? And go ahead and hit that subscribe button right here on my channel. We are literally less than 30 people away from passing through 10,000 subscribers. I can't even believe it. Oh, small town boy Tanner Flowers from Cleveland, Tennessee, about to break 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's just unheard of, guys. Never thought that would even be possible. Guys, leave us a comment. You already know if you've been following along at all. Go ahead and look down below. I do my best to answer each and every comment left on this channel. Even if you're a little bitty crybaby trying to aggravate me, I like giving you a little attention too, sweetheart. So I'll talk to you soon as well if you got something uh, if you got something whiny to say. And guys, always leave us a like. You know I appreciate every single one of you. There's a big heart to you. I'll go ahead and shoot an arrow through it. I'll throw my marker all the way across the floor. And thank you all. I appreciate your time. And I can't wait to talk to each and every single one of you inside that next video.